Hello everybody, my name is Howard Elvermar. For those of you who are new, the best way to stay up to date of, of which videos we do is to subscribe. And uh, y'all can also like and share and comment to help the channel grow. But anyway, we're going to be starting from Genesis 1 and we're going to be going all the way to Genesis 20. So let's get started. Both man and beast and the creeping thing. Sorry, let me start over. Genesis 6. And it came to pass... When men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw, the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive, and take them... Okay. Yeah, we're going to stop right there. Um, what What's going on so far? So in this story, God just getting fed up with all of the corruption in the earth, and all of the sin. And all of the lies, all of the, the betrayals, all of the wickedness. And God's saying enough's enough and he's going to flood the earth and almost kill all of humanity. Except for Noah and um, his sons and I, and I guess he doesn't have any daughters, but his son's wives. Yeah, so, um, sometimes God just gets fed up with us, people. And we need to realize that. We need to realize that enough's enough. And we need to come to grips with our sins. We need to admit that we messed up, and we need to try to do better. And as I said, try and I do, because, you know, a bunch of us will mess up again and again. But, um, we we might be trying our best. We might be, and that's what God's going to look at. That's what he's going to look at. And whatever you do, if you're struggling with an addiction, try to um, stop that or try to reduce that over time to where uh, 
you know, it eventually stops. Like, let's say if you smoke a cigarette every day, maybe smoke one every other day. Then maybe smoke one every three days. You know, sometimes you need to just slowly phase things out. Because to stop something altogether, that might be hard and challenging, but to slowly face it out, that's not as hard and challenging, you know, to some people. Maybe God's calling you to stop it altogether, though. I don't know. I don't know. But God loves you. He does. He loves you. He does. He loves you. He does. He loves you. By the way, in, um... About um, 35 minutes, I'm going to take a little break. But yeah. And um, we just need to come together as Christians and to help one another. Listen, as of the timing of this recording, right now we're having uh, a war with Russia and Ukraine and a war with Israel and Hamas. And as Christians, we need to come together to solve our problems. We do. We don't need to solve our problems by gunfire, by missiles, by killing, by attacking. We don't need that. What we need to do is come together and be like, okay, so what uh, What did I do wrong to you? Or what did you do wrong to me? And maybe we can work something out. You know, because... Uh, you know, violence, that's a terrible, terrible way to solve problems. That's a terrible way. That's a terrible way to solve problems. That is a terrible way to solve problems. That is a terrible way to solve problems. That is a terrible way. That is. That is a terrible way. That is. That is a terrible way. That is. And as Christians, you know, we, um, we're supposed to be very peaceful creatures sometimes. Sometimes, yes, yeah, somet- sometimes, uh, but yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, we shouldn't let people walk all over us. So sometimes we need to stand up for what we believe in and fight for what we believe in. But I believe that God's calling us also to be like, you know what, You can you please stop doing this? Can you please stop treating me like this? You know, just explain ourselves to somebody. Just do that. Just do that. And if they don't understand that, then maybe take an action. Because sometimes uh, we only see... Uh, we only see the world through uh, our own point of view. And we don't see anything wrong with some things that we do or other people do. What other people do? What other people do? Yeah, so um, just continue just to pray for one another. Continue to help out one another. Continue to do your best, whatever it is y'all can do. Just continue to do that. 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 And listen, some people, they're rude, they're unkind, they're unforgiving, but God will show them. God will. Sometimes we need to take a step back and pray to God and ask God for guidance. And ask God for help. And ask God for uh, forgiveness. And ask God for advice. I'm sorry if I said that one already, but that one's very important. That's what we need to do. We need to ask God for advice sometimes. Because sometimes we only see problems through our own point of view whenever God's saying, hey, there's more than one point of view here. 
That's what he's saying. There's more than one point of view. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. So yeah, so um, whatever you do, and do it for God, do it for His glory, do it to understand Him, do it to serve Him better. Just uh, and do it to help out one another if you can. And some people are like, well, um, I can only let's say um, let's say I can only give bread to somebody. Well, if you can only give bread to somebody, then maybe you should go ahead and do it. Because remember this, even the small things that we do for, for people can make a huge difference in somebody's life. And you might not realize it. Let me use myself as an example, and I've used this hundreds of times. Okay, so we was at a grocery store, and this woman dropped uh, this coin. And I picked it up for her. And she told me thank you because she just had back surgery. Now you see me picking up a coin that didn't seem like a big deal. But to that other person who just had back surgery, that was. That was. That was. That was. So let me move my phone around that way the screen doesn't uh, go off. That was. That was. And we all need one another. We do. We do. We do. You can be an extrovert, an introvert. You can have ADHD. You can have uh, Asperger's. You can have uh, autism. But we all need one another. We do. 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 And we all uh, need to love one another. We do. Now, I didn't say that we all should be uh, foolish and let people walk all over us. It didn't, the Bible doesn't say that. Well, the Bible does say to turn down the cheeks sometimes. But sometimes I believe that we got to stand up for what we believe in. I mean, even Jesus got mad at people. And um, there's an old uh, story of, like, people, like, selling things and... Uh, Making money in the temple, in a, in basically a church, or what, you could call it a temple or a church or whatever you want. But God was fed up with that, and He got mad and He turned over some tables. Well, Jesus got mad and turned over some tables. Why? Because church isn't a place to where, where you can where you need to sell goods. It's not. It's not. It's a place where you should come to to study the Word of God and to worship the Word of God and to fellowship with others. Those are the three reasons why you should go to church. Those are. Those are. Those are. Those are. Those are. Those are. Those are those are those are those are But yeah, so um, we need to study the Word of God and apply it to our lives. We need to do that. We need to do that. 
And what do I mean by applied to our lives? I mean that, like, not, let's say uh, the Ten Commandments, but let's use one that says, I shall not kill. Well, what does that mean? That means that you shouldn't kill anybody. Unless, I believe that there are some exceptions. If you're in the military, if you're a cop and you're defending uh, somebody or yourself, and in self-defense. I believe that those are the three exceptions. That's what I believe. That's what I believe. But, uh, yeah, so, um, what are y'all thoughts about this Bible verse? What are y'all thoughts? Did I maybe glance over something I shouldn't have glanced over? Let's see. Oh, by the way, uh, there is, uh, something that I don't really understand. Maybe y'all can tell me. But, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, where is it? Uh... Yeah, where is it? It says that my glory should not always try for men. Let me start over. Okay, okay. But uh, anyway, it says something like 120 years. I can't find it right now. But uh, I want to know what uh, that's about. Just somebody else's point of view. Yeah, that just interests me, you know. But yeah, and some people are saying, why didn't the Messiah, why doesn't the Messiah, sorry, why, uh, why didn't Jesus come back then? And not today, and, and I don't know, you know, I'm not sure the exact answer. I guess we're not ready for him, or, 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 uh, right now isn't the right time. Or right now wasn't a good time for him to come. And I believe that, um, that we are, uh, in the final days. What do I mean by that? I mean, I, I mean, uh, in the book of Revelation, it talks about the end times or the final days. And it talks about all this sin, all this corruption, all this horrible, horribleness that's going on. And we see this happening right before our eyes, I believe. We're seeing neighbor turn against neighbor. We're seeing wars and famines and disasters. We're seeing conflicts all around the world. We're seeing starvation. We're seeing uh, viruses. We're seeing people going to war over land. We're seeing people just getting demolished. We're seeing, uh, in the final days, it says that every nation shall go to war against Israel. And what's happening right now? Right now, we're, ha we're having um, a whole bunch of countries going to war against Israel. Well, not a whole bunch, but a whole bunch of uh, people helping Hamas and people indirectly, um, uh, trying to destroy Israel. That's what we're seeing. And it's very, very scary and very serious. Very serious. Very serious. Very serious. And we we need one another. We do we don't need to go to war. We don't need to um Solve our problems through guns, through violence. We can solve our problems through peaceful ways. 
we can. Whenever it comes to, uh, you know, most of the time we can. Now, sometimes some of us don't respect each other. We treat each other like trash. We treat each other like garbage. We, uh, take advantage of one another. We do. We do. We do. Which we should, but we do. Now, I've been, I, I think that God's gonna say enough's enough again one day with all this sin. Like he did, um, uh, with the flood. And he's gonna, um, uh, he's gonna basically let us destroy ourselves. And then we'll be judged. And some people are saying that, um, once you die, you're gonna go to heaven or hell permanently. Not according to what the Bible says. The Bible says that we'll all be judged, uh, in the end times. It does. And some of us who went to heaven are gonna go to hell, and some of us who went to hell are gonna go to heaven. That's what the Bible says. So don't believe all this nonsense about if you die, you're gonna go to hell forever. Yeah, you might go to hell for a while, but maybe that's not forever. Unless, um, sometimes you live through all of the, uh, end time prophecies. But God loves you. He does. He loves you. And he doesn't want to see you hurt. He doesn't want to see you sore or do hard times. He doesn't want to see you fight illnesses and fight starvation. But listen, God, he has a plan for your life. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. He has a plan for your life. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. He has a plan for your life. Don't. Just don't. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. He has a plan for your life. And listen, we can say mean things about one another, and sometimes we need to hear those mean things. Because sometimes we think we're doing okay whenever in reality we're hurting people. We think we're doing okay, but in reality we're mistreating people. We think we're doing okay, but in reality we're, um, you know, treating people like little kids and they're grown, and we're grown adults. We are. Now sometimes, yes, yeah, some of us have learning disabilities and some of us have, um, autism and some of us have both and some of us have, um, other things that make us um, not at our age. But, um, you know, sometimes we still mistreat those people. We still do. Sometimes I get mistreated. For those of you who don't know, I have a learning disability. And I have Tourette's syndrome and I have other things. I do. 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 Sorry, I had to stretch. I do. And y'all can probably tell by the way I read and by the way I pronounce things. I have a learning disability. I do. I do. I do. And people, listen, right now, there's so much drama going around. So much of this negativity going around. And, um, we need to come together before it's too late. Before God says enough's enough. And we need to help out one another. We do. We do. Because, listen, I believe this, that uh, what goes around comes around. So, uh, if you're nice to somebody, God's going to remember that, and God might reward you for that later on. But don't do it because God is rewarding you for it. Do it because you love people. Do it because you want to help people. Don't do it because it's some reward. That stuff is nice, but that's not the reason why you should do it. 
And do because you want to serve God. The Bible says, uh, words without faith is meaningless. So what does that mean? That means that, um, if we work hard at something, we should also, uh, I'm trying to word this right. We should also, um, do it because we love God. And do it because we want to, uh, contribute to society. And do it because we want to better the world. Don't be lazy. Don't sit around all day watching YouTube videos and do nothing. Like, um, let me use me as an example. I do sit around a lot of times and watch YouTube videos, but I also make YouTube videos. Cause I, and I'm also helping people like that. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am, by the way, in about, um, let's see, uh, 25 minutes, I'm going to take a little break, but y'all want to notice, I'll just pause recording, this isn't live, and I don't do live videos because my internet, sometimes it sucks, and I can't really get the quality I want to get out of it. But yeah, so, um, how do we as Christians continue to serve God, continue to honor God, continue to share the Word of God? Well, we can do it through YouTube videos, through making YouTube videos, sorry. Okay, I'm back, my phone just went, my phone screen just went to the lock screen. But yeah, so we can, um, also please put your phones on Do Not Disturb. I always forget that, but that's very, very important. Because you don't want anything disturbing you from hearing the Word of God, unless it's very important. So yeah, so, um, let me get to our verse of the day while I'm thinking about it. And, uh, it's Ephesians 4.26. Let's see, be I angry and sin not, let not the sun go down unto your wrath. And to me, what does that mean? That means that, uh, it's okay to get angry sometimes. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. But notice what it says, and sin not. So, uh, just because you get angry doesn't mean that that's a sin. But it's how you handle that anger that can be a sinful thing. Like, for example, let's say, um, let's say somebody, let's say, um, let's see, I'm trying to think of an example. Let's say I do somebody's yard and they don't really like it and they tell me off. And um, to me, that, that's just me not doing everything, anything to their expectations. And then telling me off is okay as long as they don't cuss. And um, they don't... Uh, be, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't treat me like a little kid. They don't. They don't. They don't. I'm sorry about my baby mess up right there. I'm a rough sleeper. They don't. But just whatever you're doing, it, do it for God. Do it to serve His glory. Do it to honor Him. Do it to glorify Him. Do it for those things. Do it for those things. Do it for those things. Do it. Do it. And, um, how do we, um, fight addictions? Let's talk about that. Now, sometimes being on your phone too much can be an addiction. Sometimes, um, 
Watching the news can be an addiction. Sometimes watching TV can be an addiction. And how... And I know that the obvious ones are smoking and vaping and doing drugs. You know, those are all addictions too. But how do we fight them? Well, I urge y'all to do two things. Well, one thing. Uh, if y'all stopping something that's sinful, replace it with something that's not. Why? Because if you don't, you're going to have more free time and what you're going to think about doing that sinful stuff. But if you replace it with something that's not sinful, then um, you're not gonna have, you're not gonna think about it as much. You're not going to. Hopefully, you're not going to. You know, uh, different strategies might help different people. They might. They might. Like for example, watching these videos might help you. It might. It might take your mind off things. It might. It might. It might. It might. It might. And sometimes, uh, we need to, as Christians, we need to stop doing the sinful stuff. We need to. Well, all the time, I guess, we need to stop doing the sinful stuff. We need to. But, um, I guess, so I guess there are some exceptions, because sometimes God's like, you know what, you worked hard for your labor, maybe you deserve to have a can of uh, Coca-Cola or root beer, because, um, the Bible says that those can be sinful too. And what, why do, how can they be sinful? Well, that damages your body if you drink too much of it. If you drink too much of it. But if you drink a, a little bit, I guess that's okay. Yeah, I mean a little bit as in maybe one or two can, one can a day. Might be a little bit, whereas a lot it's like five or six. And sometimes some of us can um, need to stop doing what we're doing because we can't afford it. So sometimes God's like, wait, you need to stop this, you need to slow this down. You need to. You need to. You need to. And I just pray that I'm able to reach this one person with this. With this video. With this video. At least one person. Maybe two. But even if nobody watches this, I'm still happy. You know why? Because God's watching this. And by nobody, I mean no human, sorry. But God's watching this. And as long as he approves of it, then that's okay. That's okay. And the fame and the glory, yeah, that can be uh, helpful. It can be. It can be. It can be helpful. It can be. It can be. It can be. Very helpful. It can be. Very helpful. It can be. Very helpful. And listen, right now, um... Money's tight, so uh, if y'all want to give me money, let me know, and we'll figure out something. <clears throat> By money's tight, I mean that, like, uh, right now, uh, my mom's disabled, my dad's disabled, and I'm disabled. And with the price of everything just skyrocketing, it's just hard for us to afford everything. That's why it's been a while since I upgraded, um... My camera and my computer and my mic, my phone to my newest thing, and that was upgraded about two months ago. It was, but I'm still paying for it. So please, uh, if y'all want to help out with the bills, uh, let me know. Also, if y'all want to donate money towards like me having a new computer or a new mic or new whatever, let me know. Let me know. And keep in mind that right now I don't get, as of the time of this recording, I don't get paid for this. I'm working on uh, getting paid, hopefully maybe uh, growing this channel one day to get paid for everything. But right now it's just I can't, uh, I, I don't make enough uh, views 
And I don't have enough subscribers to get paid for this. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. And it seems like I'm working on videos every day. No, I have a schedule, and um, you know, I'm just hoping for the best. I am. I am. I'm hoping for the best. I am. And all I can do is put my finances in God's hands and hope for the best. Hope for a better tomorrow. I can. I can. I can. I can. I can. I can. And, um... You know, by the time this comes out, uh, let me see whenever this is gonna come out. I think it's gonna be... Let me see. Okay, so this is gonna come out on... On the 25th of October, and my birthday is on the 16th. So let's pray that I'm able to make a little bit of money for my birthday and buy me something nice that I want. Like I said, this is going to be on the 25th of. 24th? Wait. Yeah, 25th of October, and my birthday is November 16th. So hopefully, I'm able to buy myself something nice. Or well, get something nice, or both. Or both. Or maybe just go somewhere. Or maybe just stay home if I want to. And please uh, keep my daddy and mom and your parents. My daddy, he's a diabetic. Plus, he's had a major accident, and it messed up his back, and, uh, it messed up his back. And my mama, she gets dizzy sometimes, and as of the day this recording, we don't know what's causing it. And she has fallen before, and she can't work right now. So, right now, we're relying on, uh, me and my dad. Cause I'm uh, I'm disabled and I get a disability check and so does my dad. And uh, most of it goes towards bills and the groceries. Most of it does. And I'm talking about like ninety nine point nine percent of it. Most of it does. Most of it does. Now sometimes I do like to buy uh, some drinks or maybe a movie. But I try to watch my and uh, a few snacks, and I try to watch myself down. I try to watch it. I try to watch what I buy in about two more minutes. I'm gonna take a little break. Y'all gonna hear uh, an alarm go off. So yeah. So um, just. Whatever y'all do, do to serve God. Let me tell y'all of an old uh, proverb. Okay, so there was this man. Well, I think it's a proverb. But there was this man who kept on asking God or Jesus or, uh, you know, I guess you could say they're both God. But uh, he kept on asking uh, one of them um, if he could help them. And God kept on sending people His way, and He kept on helping them, but He didn't. Re but He didn't uh, help God. And God said this: Whatever you do to the poor people, to the needy people, to the people that uh, you know, whatever you do to one another to help out one another, you're doing it to me. You're helping me out, and that's how God looks at it. That's how He does. That's how he looks at it. That's how he does. So, 
you know, there are those of us who question, uh, why does God allow, uh, all this sinful stuff to happen? And how can we help God? Well, like I said earlier, whatever you do to one another, you're doing it to God. To help Him out. Whenever you're helping people out. So, uh, if all you can do is buy somebody a loaf of bread, well, buy somebody a loaf of bread, and you're helping God out. It, sorry, that's my alarm. That's my alarm. I'll be right back. What's up, everybody? I'm back again. Yeah, so, to me, um, God's gonna, um, turn his back on humanity again in the last days, and he's gonna let us destroy ourselves, pretty much. And that can be very, very uh, scary, which is why I urge y'all to uh, get right with God right now. I highly urge y'all to do that. Get right with God right now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till the next minute or the next second or the next hour. Don't wait. Because why? Because, you know, this, um, the next second we can have a heart attack or we can have, we could die in an automobile accident or something else can happen to us. We don't know. We're not guaranteed. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not. We're not. And God flooded the whole earth last time. Well, um, not last time he turns back on humanity. I guess that was whenever Jesus was crucified, after Jesus was crucified. But, um, the, the first time he turns back on humanity, he destroyed, he allowed the whole world to, almost the entire human population to be destroyed. He and if he allowed that, imagine what he's going to do in the end times. Imagine what he's going to let happen. Or imagine what he's doing right now. If y'all believe in, if y'all believe that we're in, living in the end times right now, imagine how think how much things are going to get worse and worse. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine that. Because God loves you. He does. He does. He loves you. He does. He does. He loves you. He does. He loves you. And He doesn't want to see bad things happen to you. But listen, we're born into a sinful world. We're born into a very corrupt world. We're born into an imperfect world. That's why we have all of these illnesses and all this sin. That's why we have children that's being, um, you know, born with all of these disabilities. That's why we're having violence out on the streets. That's why we have a neighbor turn against neighbor, friend turn against friend. Whenever we should be coming together to solve our problems. We should be. In fact, um, there, uh, there's this organization, I want to say it's in New York City, it's about Muslims and Christians coming together and help solving their problems. And that's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. Yes, we do have our differences. But, uh, we need to come together to solve our problems. We do. We do. We do. That's why we're having, um, you know, like I said earlier, neighbor go against neighbor. But, and sometimes it's even husband going against wives. Sometimes it's, uh, brother going against brother and sister going against sister. Sometimes it is. Why? Because we're not seeing ourselves through the other people's point of view sometimes. Sometimes that's the problem. We're only seeing ourselves through our own point of view. That's it. That's it. That's it. And sometimes we need to uh, take a step back and be like, what did I do wrong today? How did I mess up? Because, um... 
Let's go back to the Bible verse. Sorry, put your phone, please put your phones on Do Not Disturb again. Let's see. When they say it's 620? Yeah, so, uh, we need to, uh, apply the Bible to our lives. We need to do that. We need to. We need to. We need to. We need to. We do. We really do. We really need to. And we need to stop all of this fighting. Stop all the war. Stop all the violence. We need to. We need to come together and resolve things peacefully. Listen, it's okay to disagree with somebody. It is. It is. In fact, um, I live in the U.S. and a lot of our um, founding fathers, they disagreed with some things, but they came together to form a nation. They did. They came together to form the United States. And sometimes we need to put our differences aside and work together on some things. We need to. We need to. We need to study the Bible. We need to apply to our lives. We need to study other cultures, other religions, and to better understand them. We need to. We do. We, we do. We really need to. We do. 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 And we need to uh, stop all these sins, stop all these lies, stop all the corruption, stop all the horrible things that's going on with each other. We do. Because listen, God, uh, there's going to come a point in time where God's going to uh, give up on humanity, basically, and let us uh, do what we want to do and let the results show for themselves. There's going to come a time whenever the Antichrist is going to um, become the world's most powerful uh, leader. And he's, he's going to rule all the nations. Except for maybe Israel. And we're seeing that, I believe that we're seeing nation turn against nation right now. Right now we are. We're seeing friend turn against friend, neighbor turn against neighbor. Right now we are. 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 So please, please help out one another. Please don't be selfish. I mean, you know, yeah, um, you got to take care of yourself and your families before y'all can take care of others a lot of times. But, um, if y'all do have a little bit of extra money to give to a church, maybe y'all should do it. I don't know, that's in between y'all and God, but maybe y'all should do it. Or maybe y'all should, um, uh, give money towards God's house, which is a Facebook channel, YouTube page, I'm sorry, YouTube channel, Facebook page, X profile, PlayStation account, um, uh, and Pinterest account. I use to share these videos. That's what I do. And sometimes I, I might be forgetting a few things. Like, uh, I know, uh, I, know I, I just thought about it. I uh, also uh, play Roblox. So, 
So yeah, so we need to come together and to help out one another. We need each other, we do. We really do, we really need each other, we do. Like, um, there's this old saying, divided, united we stand, divided we fall. What does that mean? That means that sometimes we need to come together to work and solve our problems. Whether that be uh, because we believe in, uh, you know, um, the Quran or the Gospels, you know, the Holy Bible, or maybe different versions of the Bible, like the K in NIV or the or the New King James Version or the Old King or uh. I was going to say the old King James Version, but I don't think it's called, I think it's just called the King James Version. You know, we need to put our differences aside and help out one another. We do. We do. And sometimes God's calling us to forgive people. Sometimes He is. So, like, uh, there was this um proverb that went like this. There was this person who borrowed money for somebody and had the person that they borrowed money for forget, forgave them, but uh, somebody else borrowed money from them and they didn't forgive them. And the person that uh, originally let them borrow money for uh, they uh, they were like, why, why didn't you let them forgive you? So I have Tourette syndrome, which means I have uncontrolled muscle movement. That's that's why I was just scratching my head. But sometimes that's it. Sometimes we need to forgive people for what they owe us. Sometimes that's it. And sometimes that's easier said than done. Sometimes that's it. That is easier easier said than done. Sometimes that is easier said than done. Sometimes I dance. Sometimes I dance. Sometimes I dance. Sometimes I dance. And is that an easy thing to do? No, not all the time. Sometimes it can be, sometimes it can. it's not. And listen, there are those of us right now that are living out on the streets. I don't know how we're going to be able to afford to pay the bills. I don't know how we're going to be able to uh, afford to pay college. I don't know how we're going to be able to afford to help out our families. And to me, this Bible verse really stands out. It's, uh, I forgot exactly where I found that, but it goes like this. Um... See, I'm trying to remember exactly how it goes, but it, uh, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. What does that mean? That means that if we give him, if we give somebody money, we feed him for that day. But if we teach a man how to make their own money, we're feeding them for a lifetime. That could be like maybe teaching them a skill, or maybe teaching them the importance of hard work. Or maybe uh, teaching them that uh, having the latest and greatest technology isn't as important as food, food on the table sometimes. Sometimes that's those things or uh, what's God calling the guys to do. Sometimes that's it. 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 Sometimes I dance. Sometimes I dance. Sometimes I dance. And you know, it's important to go outside to exercise a little bit while we can, before we get too old and before we can't do that. It's not good to stay in the house all day. It's not. Like, but sometimes some of us, that's not an option. Sometimes that's not. For, but, but for those of us who can go outside and enjoy the fresh air, do that sometimes. 
You know that sometimes. You know that sometimes. You know that sometimes. You know that sometimes. You know that sometimes. You know that sometimes. You know that sometimes. So my phone's not when I just turned it on. But uh yeah, so uh let me see something. Forgot to hit resume, okay. But do that sometimes. Do that sometimes. So these are what I got plot to your life. Um Apply what the gospel says to your life. What does the Bible say about sin? The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So what does that mean? That means that if we steal a gun or if we steal a thousand dollars, the punishment's the same. Death. And going to hell, that's the punishment. But through Jesus Christ, we can be forgiven. He died on the cross for our sins. Listen, uh, before Jesus did that, uh, we used to have animal sacrifices. That's how we used to pay for our sins, through animal sacrifices. But now we don't have to do that because Jesus died on a cross for us. He did. He died on a cross for us. He did. He did. He died on a cross for us. He did. And He loves us. Sorry about the camera glitching out, but He loves us. He does. 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 He loves us. He loves us. Like the song goes, Jesus loves me, this I know. He does, he loves us. God sent his one and only begotten son on the cross to die for our sins. He did. He did. He did. Is he perfect? Well, yes, he is. Yes, and remember this, even angels rebelled against God. Even angels did. And they, uh, a lot of them were, uh, around God all the time before they rebelled. A lot of them were. But they sinned. And if angels can sin, and if they always sin God and stuff like that, then imagine what we can do. We don't see God all the time. We're not as close to Him as the angels are. But He loves us. He does. 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 And listen, there have been events that have happened in my life where the only, that the only explanation I have for them is miracles. That's it. And I said this time after time, but whenever I was little, um, my sister, she had a surgery on her legs. And my mother, I think she was with her. And uh, I had to go to school that day. And my father used to work offshore. And one time I got home from school and I realized I had lots of keys in the house. So I prayed to God and somebody opened the door for me. Somebody did. 
And to this day, I don't know who it was. But somebody opened that door for me. Somebody did. Somebody did. Somebody did. Somebody did. Somebody did. Somebody did. And I just thank God for that. And, um, let's see, another time I had forgot my, uh, homework at school, at home, and I was at school, and it was a lunch period, so I prayed to God. And right as the teacher was calling my name, somebody came on the, on the intercom and said that somebody had, uh, brought some, um, uh, papers for me to school. And those papers turned out to be my homework. Well, it might have been just one paper, but it was my homework. And you see, God loves me. He does. He does. He loves me. He does. He does. He loves me. He does. He loves me. He does. He loves me. And if he loves me, I know he loves y'all too. The question is, are y'all willing to turn from him and are y'all willing to ask him for forgiveness? Sometimes those are the questions. Sometimes they are. And sometimes the question is, am I willing to do that? Am I? Well, let's face it. Sometimes that's easier said than done. Sometimes that is. It's easier said than done. Sometimes that is. 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 Sometimes it is saying that, uh, it is easier saying that, you know, we should save money for our church or we should donate more time to, to our church than actually doing it. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. Sometimes that's easier saying, oh, I'm going to spend uh, an hour studying the Word of God than actually doing it. Or sometimes it's easier saying, I'm going to go to church and then not do it. Or sometimes it's, it's easier saying, uh, you know, I, uh, let's see, I, uh, I need help doing something, uh, or sometimes it's easier saying, um, God, why don't you help me with this or that whenever we need to help out each other? Sometimes God puts us things in our, sometimes God puts things in our path that we don't like. By path, I mean life. Sometimes He does. Sometimes He does. And sometimes we, uh, we don't always understand why He does this. And I'm pretty sure people, uh, was having a hard time understanding why God was flooding the earth. And why God was allowing innocent babies and children to die. Sometimes it, sometimes that happens. Sometimes God calls us, um, Sometimes God allow bad things to happen to good people, and sometimes allow God. Sometimes God allows good things to happen to bad people. 
Sometimes it does. Sometimes it allows the good things to happen to good people and bad things to happen to other good people. And sometimes it's the other way around. For both of them. And how can you go closer to God? Well, sometimes it's reading the Bible. Sometimes it's watching sermons. Sometimes it's, listen, it's watching Christian TV shows. Like, for example, Touched by an Angel. Sometimes it is. 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 Yeah, so, uh, how do we as Christians deal with, the, uh, the fact that we live in an imperfect world? Well, you know, sometimes that's easier said than done. Like, for example, there was, um, I want to say there was this person with this illness, and I want to say he was blind. And some people, some of the disciples were like, God, what did his parents do to, um, uh, to make him blind, because they used to believe that sin was carried over from one generation to another. And God said, and uh, Jesus said this, he didn't do anything, his parents didn't do anything wrong. That's just because he was born into an imperfect world. Sometimes he is. Sometimes that's the reason that we're born into an imperfect world. Sometimes it is. 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 And listen, I realize that the holidays are almost here. And some of us are worried about how we're going to be able to afford to pay for gifts. And sometimes God's like, you know what the best gift of all is? Him. Sharing the word of God. That's the best gift. Sometimes that's all we can do. I mean, it's free. It don't, um, cost anything because, you know, it's free. And, um, it can change people's lives. It can. Share the gospel to whoever you can. You know, uh, within, you know, don't do some. be careful with, the Bible says, uh, pick our bowels wisely. So, um, maybe sharing it at certain times is not okay, like maybe during work hours, or maybe whenever you're on a job, but whenever you, uh, not on a job, you know, it might be okay, it might be, or maybe God's calling you to share the word of God with somebody at work, despite what I said, despite what I said. And there are some people that will never understand you. They do. They'll never understand why you're so kind, why you're so forgiving, why you're so thankful. They never will. They never will. Why? Because they're not Christians. They don't believe, some of them don't believe in God. Some of them believe that life is pointless or that the only meaning of life is what we give it. Some of us do. Some of us do. Some of us do. Some of us do. And they don't know why we share the Word of God. Why we continue to preach the Word of God. Why we continue to share the Word of God. And yet they feel empty. They feel sad. They feel depressed. They feel that the entire world is against them. That's what they feel. That's what they feel. That's what they feel. 
Ni ni ta wa su ni ni ta su de fi o. But we need to help one another. We need to show kindness to one another. We need to praise God. We need to honor God. We need to glorify God. We need to follow the Ten Commandments. And this, the Bible says, For all have sinned, fall short of glory, God. All of us have sinned. All of us have. Even me. Even I have sinned. Even me. You know, there was, uh, I say this a lot, but there was this one, uh, Preacher who is preaching somebody and he says, For you have sinned and you have sinned and you have sinned. And one of the people he pointed to was me. And yes, even I have sinned. Even I have. 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 Even I have sinned. And I'm not perfect. I'm not. I'm not. I've broken all of the Ten Commandments. I've disobeyed my parents, which is one of the Ten Commandments. I've lied, which is another one of the Ten Commandments. I have, um, you know, looked at somebody and think, wow, she's hot, and that's another two commandments being broken. I have, um, uh, you know, done all, I've, I just have to go to hell according to the Bible, but yeah, I'm still living. Now I still have a chance to get in and drive with God before I die. I do. 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 And listen, there are times in my life where I have just committed so many sins. And I thank God for, for, for the fact that He's forgiven me. I thank God for that. I thank God for that. I thank God for that. I do. I thank God for that. I do. I thank God for that. I do. I do. God is the great I am that I am. Which means that He's He was there at the beginning of time and He'll be there at the end. And listen, there are some things that God cannot do. For example, God cannot commit a sin. He can't. He can't. He cannot lie. He cannot steal. He cannot. Dest- he cannot um, commit adultery. He cannot. Uh, no, but he can't. He can't. Uh, I said he cannot steal. He cannot sin. He can't. He can't. He, now he can allow the devil to do to those things. He can. He can. He can. He cannot create a mountain. Him himself cannot move. He can. He can. So there are some limita- limits when it comes to being God. And he cannot force you to follow him. He cannot. He cannot. By the way, I'm talking about the Christian God, by the way. He cannot. He cannot force you to, uh... He 
Him, I force you to um to do horrible things. You cannot. And he loves you. He does. 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 So yeah, so with all that being said, um, just remember this. No matter how bad things seem, no matter how bad things are, no matter how, uh, you know, how bad things get, God loves you. He does. He loves you. He does. No matter what your gender is, no matter what your race is, no matter what your agnativity is, He loves you. And he wants you to get to know him, and he wants you to follow him, and he wants you to understand his word. And how do we start? We can start with videos like this. We can start by reading even a verse a day. Or sometimes God causes us to do more, like sometimes he's calling us to read a chapter a day. Or sometimes he calls us to do less, sometimes he calls us to just listen to sermons. Now some of us have jobs, some of us do, some of us don't have time to read a chapter a day, some of us have to take care of little ones, so, or sometimes some of us have to take care of grown adults that have illnesses, or sometimes they might not have illnesses but uh, they're just going through hard times. Sometimes some of us ha God's calling us to take care of our adult children because they're going through hard times and they're trying their best. They just can't make it. They just can't make it on their own. Sometimes those things are true. Sometimes they are. 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 Anyway, I'm getting kind of tired and um, uh, I go outside for a little while, choke myself up a little bit. But uh, anyway, um, I'll see y'all next time, guys. Bye.